This is the BDO Weekly Recap, and I am Marinku Talks. This week, we of course have tons of PvP balance changes in the NA and EU patch notes, but we also have information on what Korea is planning for the future of PvP, node wars, and sieges. On May 2nd, we received the patch notes for NA and EU, featuring the new world boss, Often Ted. You may remember this guy if you've ever been in a guild and fought the Often Tet guild boss. However, the world boss, being the same mechanics, is on a much larger scale. The new world boss, Miramok Destroyer Often, aka the giant tree, and Often's Tet, aka the thing inside the tree that drops the loot, will appear every Friday on NA and EU at these designated times. For me, the new world boss spawns at 8pm PST. Tomorrow, my plan is to livestream the takedown of the very first Often Tet to hit the NA server. If you didn't know, I stream. Links in the description. Also, if you want to know what to prepare for, and if you don't know how to fight the guild version of this boss, basically, you may want to bring a hunting musket. This boss has many roots. Once one is destroyed, Often's Tet will jump out of the tree barrier in the center. At this point, you may attack Often Tet or shoot the tree barrier he jumped out of. When Often Tet loses about 30% HP, and again after another 30% HP, he will jump into the tree barrier if it's not destroyed. And to get him to come back out, you have to destroy another root. After the very first root is destroyed and Often comes out of the barrier for the very first time, if enough people with hunting muskets break the barrier, he will never jump into the barrier, you can kill him, and he will drop loot instantly without any other roots having to be destroyed. It also says down here at the bottom, the top 30 adventurers who contributed the most in destroying the root of Often will, in addition to the normal loot, also have a chance to obtain Often's Tendril or Often Tet's Light Fragment. In addition to the normal loot and the loot for the people that contributed the most in destroying the roots, the people that contribute the most in destroying the protective shield with hunting muskets also have an additional chance at even more loot, either a Force Fury or Often Tet's Light Fragment. This boss drops Voltara's Eclipsed Belt, Force Fury, Jin Bon Wan Magic Crystals for Kobe's, and you may have heard the Often Tet's Fragments. It of course drops the new boss weapon, Often Tet's Light Sealed Weapon Box, the new main hand. If you don't understand what the fragments are yet, basically you collect 100 fragments and you could turn it in for the weapon box if you don't have the RNG to get a weapon box off the boss itself. Also, as a quick summary of the new main hand, it has 20 less accuracy at pen than Zarka, it has 3 more AP on average than Zarka, and instead of having plus 3 attack speed and casting speed, it has plus 2 attack speed and casting speed, but it also has plus 2 critical. It is an ideal weapon for people that want to min-max all their stats, maybe pass soft cap, but losing the accuracy is pretty huge for most people. Next, let's talk about the events for NA and EU. First up, we have Time is Gold and Brings You Treasure. All you have to do is play 5 hours every day, this is just your daily login rewards. The first hour, you get Blackstones, the second hour, you get Memfrags, honorable mention because everyone loves Memfrags, the third one, you get Hard Shards. The 4th hour, you get a gold key, and the 5th hour, you get a gold chest to open with that gold key. If you're not convinced that playing for 5 hours is worth it, well, this is what you can get from the golden chest. Dandelion weapon box, Nuver weapon box, Bassy belt, Tungrad earring, Ogre ring, Sissel necklace, the list goes on. Tons of stuff, all for free, just play the game, and you'll get rewarded. Pretty nice. Event number 2, it's Raining Enhancement. Basically, defeat monsters to randomly receive already enhanced gear. In Balanos and Serenia, you can receive gear already up to plus 5. In Calpheon, plus 10. In Media Valencia and Comma Sylvia, up to plus 15. That means if you go grind Sazen, you may pick up a plus 15 Grunnel chest piece. Now at first, I thought this was really going to clog my inventory, it was never going to sell, why would I want this? However, after only a few hours of grinding and two rows of already enhanced gear, I went to go extract the blackstones and got over a hundred blackstones, making it well worth keeping. 
Of course, we already have a chance to receive Pry and Duo accessories from Drops, however, at the very bottom it shows that up to Pry in Balance and Serenity and up to Duo in Calpheon, Media, Volantia, and Common Sylvia have an increased rate, so just a higher chance of all these accessories to drop versus before. Pretty cool. Brace yourselves, because now on to the PvP changes. Freezing is now a normal CC. If a CC skill is applied twice, you are immune for 5 seconds. The damage increase rate for air attacks has been decreased by 50%. The damage of grapples have been increased, and the force bounds on missed grabs have been removed, probably because of the immunity to CC. So once that sinks in, let's look at the Korean patch notes to see what they have planned for next week and the weeks after. The Black Spirit's Rage Consuming Effect, aka your Z buff, will be changed to become the same for all classes. They plan to go into details on the new effects that the Z-Buff will give in the next announcement, however the crazy KR news doesn't stop there. CC effects will be activated only on the first hit of all skills, and won't be affected by the evasion stat. This is huge. Previously, resistances were a meme because you could bypass resistances and they could only cap at a certain point in PvP. Now. Resistance is the only way to stop CC, and evasion only stops damage. This means if someone uses a CC skill, you could evade the damage with your evasion stat, you could evade the CC with your resistance stat, or you could evade both. It does say, in cases where you evade the damage but were hit by the CC, the minimum damage, 5%, of the skill will still be in effect. We also have some of the biggest changes, one being super controversial, of the Berserker, Ranger, and Wizard all getting a forward guard when walking backwards. The controversy is over Wizard. The problem is that Wizard has a grab and a forward walk, and Witch only has a forward walk. The whole gimmick of Witch was that she was supposed to be tankier, easier to manage in defensive situations because she had a block. Wizard was forced into the offensive because he did not have a block and was given a grab instead. Now, the way many people see it, is that Wizard has everything and Witch got nothing. Why would you choose Witch over Wizard? Along with these changes, there will be more later, according to the Korean patch notes. They want to reduce the gap between classes by changing the damage of the Black Spirit's Rage skills, aka your ultimates. They also want the distance the character moves when being knocked down and knocked back to be reduced. This should help with comboing and will help so much with desync, at least I hope. And improvements will be made so that a skill cannot have both a CC effect and a super armor slash forward guard in order to make, I'm just gonna simplify this, PvP better. <laughs> That's what they're hoping for. They however say that this last change will take a very, very long time to do. Basically, they want to separate the CC from the super armor so that we are not permanently in super armor CCing everyone, which is probably not a good thing. The last changes I wanted to look at are the Conquest War Season 5 changes for Korea. The process involves novice nodes, regular nodes, and conquest nodes. Novice nodes are for any small or starting guild, regular nodes are what you have to complete first, Conquest nodes are only accessible after you have a regular node, and the Conquest War is only accessible if you have completed a Conquest node. Honestly, it sounds exactly like the same system we have right now in NA and U, except instead of winning a T2 node and going to Siege, you have to win a T2 node and then win a T3 node and then go to Siege. We also have a change on how to win Territory and Castle Sieges. The Defending Guild must destroy all the attacking guild's command posts or the territory and or castle will be released. Guild elephants and cannons have been significantly buffed. They have tons of scenarios showing how much they've been buffed in each situation. I'm not going to go over it all, just read through it if you want. Next we have the guild master duel. This is crazy. The attacking team participating in the conquest war can request a guild master duel. If the defending guild does not respond or refuses, they automatically lose. The attacking team or the defending team, whichever one wins, gets the winner's buff. More description on this buff will be added to the announcement coming May 17th. 
Whatever it is, it's gotta be OP as fuck. Lastly, we have some updates to the Conquest benefits. Of course, you still get your taxes, your guild payout, but now, for owning a castle, you also get item drop rate increased by 50% in the areas for your region. Calfion Castle counts for Calfion and Kama Sylvia. Media Castle counts for Media and Dragon, and Valencia Castle is just Valencia. That is pretty cool though, it actually gives us something else other than money. And it also gives an incentive, an increased incentive, for the Media Castle and Calfion Castle. Wow, that was a lot of information, but we made it. Finally, onto the Pro Shop update. Today we have a sale on the campsite and also several outfits. However, these outfits also come with accessories. Not gear accessories, but ear accessories, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Starting with Sork, and another Sork, we have two outfits, as well as a Tamer outfit, a Valkyrie outfit, and a Maywa outfit, and they all come with matching earrings. So if you're into that, today is the day. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I think I've covered pretty much everything I can think of. I love you, and I'll see you next time.